he gives this comment. Picture what the world would be like if we were to open the doors of all the penitentiaries of earth and set free the world's most vicious and violent criminals, giving them full reign to practice their infamies upon mankind. Something worse than that lies in store for the world. Satan, cast out of heaven, is now permitted to summon to his aid the most diabolical fiends in the abyss to act as his agents in bringing mankind to the footstool of the beast. Okay, that was fun. How does this apply to my life? How does this apply to my life today? Evil, sin is nothing to flirt around with. It always starts as something small, but it always ends in something big. It starts with a fleeting thought, and you act upon that thought, and then it becomes a habit that destroys your life. This is true for everyone. Christians don't get a pass. The only difference is Christians have been given the power to be free from it. And trust me, you want to be free from this. Why do we avoid books like Revelation? Because the scary locust, right? But that away, it's all those not found in Christ. Those locusts, those demonic locusts, were given authority to torment who? Those who didn't have the seal of God on their heads. My friends, I know this is all overwhelmingly terrifying. I want to make sure you have the seal of God on your heart and on your life. I mean, just look at the people from Noah's day. Uh, I'm sure that the, the men who were like, give us the angels, I'm sure it didn't start out like that. I'm sure it started with looking at another man's wife and coveting her. That turned into adultery or some form of sexual immorality. Then they got tired of women and they started going after men. Consenting turned into rape, probably various versions of prostitution, and eventually they wanted to have sex with angels. By the way, this happens today. It's not angels, it's, it's demons. People that engage in witchcraft, they want to do these sort of things. We have a tendency to look at our sin and say, I got this under control, I can stop at any time. But you're, under, you're underestimating the power of it. The allure of our flesh to be enticed by sin cannot be underestimated. Sin will entice you, it will draw you in, it will beat you to a bloody pulp, it will take away all the things that you love, and it will leave you on the doorstep without medical attention. And it all starts with something seemingly small and under your control. For the unsaved that don't know Christ, they have no choice. Sin is their master. They're in bondage to it. But if you're found in Christ, it's different. Galatians 5.1, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. So Christ went to the cross and he died on our behalf to free us from the very bondage of sin. We should have an idea of sin that is so horrifying that we scream to be freed from it. But now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. The fruit uh, you get leads to life. Jesus has come and died on the cross to set us free. And every time we turn around and we give ourselves back to slavery to sin, giving ourselves back over to it, we put Jesus back up on the cross again. But he died once. He doesn't have to die 500 times. He doesn't have to die all those times. He died once and put to death sin and the bondage that it has over our lives. It's up to us whether to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and trust the Lord to walk in freedom or to try to do everything in our flesh. You want to know why you can't overcome that besetting sin? It's because you're not trusting in the Holy Spirit to free you. You can't do it on your own. The more you try to do it on your own, that's, 
That's called self-righteousness. The more you try to fight your sin without God's help, the more you die and lose. And just like the story in the Bible where you get rid of one demon and seven more come back and inhabit the original spot, it's just going to get more and more difficult. We have to stop fighting in our flesh. We can't save ourselves. Only Jesus can save us. We trust in him and the power of the Holy Spirit. 